You Booked It, episode 212. What's going on, everyone? Thank you for joining me today on You Booked It, the number one podcast where you learn how to create a successful entertainment career. Have you joined the You Booked It community yet? It is your go-to entertainment career resource. Inside, you'll have direct access to Broadway performers, Emmy nominees, and people just like yourself navigating this industry. Learn from those walking the walk. Build industry relationships, access unlimited masterclasses, and learn how to book the job more consistently. Join free today, tap the link in the show notes, or go to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite to get inside. And now, let's meet today's guest. All right, let's get this kicked off. I am excited to introduce my guest today, Mary Lee Mosley. Are you ready for this, Mary Lee? I'm so ready and so excited. Brilliant. Mary Lee Mosley, also known as M.L. Mosley, is a pop R&B artist based in Atlanta. Her interests in music started at a young age. At only six years old, it was then that she took her first singing lesson and became a classically trained singer. Since then, ML's love for music and vocal ability has only grown. Now, 14 years later, she has transitioned to a more contemporary sound. Her debut pop single, Thin White Line, has been well-received with fans commenting on her extensive vocal range. Her upcoming projects showcase her beautiful melodies and songwriting abilities. ML, that is a quick intro of who you are and what you've done, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, fill in the gaps, and a little bit more about what you do as a professional in the entertainment industry. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, first and foremost. So I am from Valdosta, Georgia, which if you don't know where that is, it's basically in Florida. It's on the Florida Georgia line, five hours from the nearest city, five hours from Atlanta, where I currently am. Mm. I started singing, like you said, at the age of six. I started in a kid's choir and apparently I showed something because the choir director went up to my mom and said, you need to get her into singing lessons. And that kind of started everything for me. Since then, music has been my life. It's the only thing that I really do and I love it. I moved to Atlanta at the age of 18 when I graduated from high school. I go to college at Kennesaw State. I'm still in school getting my degree. But I currently am a recording artist. I've been writing songs for a while, and I've written over 100 songs with people and by myself. Wow. I Yes, and I love to sing. I'm currently working on an EP and just getting music out there for people. Very cool. Well, let's get into this next section here because I'm excited to dig into more of that story. But first, ML, I am a sucker for a good quote. What is your favorite (laughs) quote you'd like to share with everyone? My absolute all-time favorite quote is by Roy T. Bennett. It's, be the reason someone smiles, Mm. be the reason that someone feels loved and believed in the goodness of people. Oh, it's really lovely. Can you expand on that a bit and how it's worked its way into your life? Yes, of course. So I heard this quote a couple of years back and it sums up everything that I aim to be and aim to do with my life. Watching my father when he when I was younger, he's the most unconditionally kind person to everybody. And I think that he's shown me that we're all put on this earth to love and support each other. And, mm. you know, I always since then have made that a priority in my life. I don't care how I'm doing at the time, as long as people surrounding me are taken care of and they feel loved and understood. I tend to go out of my way for anyone to feel valid and heard. And that's why I was drawn to music at such a young age because it allows me to reach others and make others feel heard and somebody else gets their pain and gets what they're going through and it also heals me at the same time yeah for sure it's you get what you give right but you have to give first Mm -hmm. and i think that's sometimes people forget that especially sometimes in this this instant gratification world that we really live in now and these the micro entertainment things you know what i mean the tiktoks and mm-hmm. everything people want so much so fast but very often it takes a lot of time before any of that kind of stuff really comes to fruition and it's because you give so much and that's also what makes things so fulfilling in the end 
Oh, yes, I completely agree. I think that I definitely am a person that believes that karma is real. And mm. I think that you what you give is what you get back. And that's what I've strived to do. I've strived to give as much as I can give. And then in return, I will get what God or the universe thinks is for me. Yeah, I love that. Well, let's move on to this next section here. And ML, of course, you're an entertainer. I'm an entertainer. And I think that you'd agree that this industry can be one of the most subjective, brutally honest, and personally emotional industries in existence. And you know, as well as I, that in order to create and have a successful career in this industry, like you're having now, takes a lot of dedication and hard work. And yeah, there is an outrageous amount of fun and excitement doing what we do. There are also our fair share of obstacles, challenges, failures that we're going to experience and we're going to have to move forward through. So tell us, what is one key challenge, obstacle, or failure you've experienced in your career? And how did you come out the other side better because of it? So one thing that I'm actually very open about now is my struggle with the view of my own body. And, you know, being in an industry that is like the entertainment industry where you're constantly having eyes on you. Mm. I think in the beginning, it was very hard for me to get out of my head and realize that this view I have of myself is not important in the grand scale of things. I've struggled with numerous body image issues and eating disorders and body dysmorphia throughout my entire life. And so in the beginning, it was very hard for me to put myself out there. I was always terrified, oh, someone's going to see the flaws that I see in myself. Mm. So. In the past year or two, I would say it's been the past two years, I've really put myself first. I think I wasn't doing that for a long time. You know how I talked about earlier, I give so much to other people. I wasn't giving back to myself. And in the past year, and I think especially with everything that's been going on in the world, I've had time to sit back and realize that you need to spend time to know yourself and to realize that you're not what society you're not society's opinion. You are beautiful in your own right. And that's just what I've had to overcome and learn through. I now, I still struggle definitely. I think anybody who has struggled with those issues will tell you it, you never get rid of them. But I've gotten much better in the last two years of really realizing my purpose that if I like something, if I like something about myself, that is good enough. Yeah, for sure. Body image and the way we see ourselves just in general is, gosh, I think I would be surprised if there is a live performance entertainer of any kind that doesn't judge themselves, right, a mm -hmm. bit too harshly. And it doesn't matter who you are, what you look like or anything. Oh, it's because yeah. we're all dealing just with our own brains and our own minds and the way we it's all a very individual thing. I remember growing or starting out in the industry. And my biggest thing was trying to find a way to fit into kind of like a chorus on like within a musical because one of my biggest problems is that I just happen to be more muscular and bigger and I was trying to mm -hmm. be a skinnier leaner <laughs> like mm -hmm. chorus person <laughs> and it was and I tried you know what I mean and mm -hmm. it just and I realized that's just not my body it never will be my body and eventually as soon as I you know gave up trying to make that happen and be a thing it really, that's when things start changing in my career as well. You know what I mean? Because you are able to own who you are and what you've been given because we all have our strengths, right? So play to those. Definitely. Definitely. I 100% agree. I think that because I've been doing this for so long, it's been, I started singing when I was six. I am now 20. So it's been, almost, I'm almost about to be 21. So it's been about 15 years since yeah. I started. And a lot of my youth and a lot of doing this has been the struggle with myself and posting videos and putting myself out there. And I think that in the last couple of years, since I have stepped back and realized I'm not going to change how I look, nothing's going to change about me. And your brain lies to you. Your, your brain will tell you, you look horrible when really you don't. And mm. so in learning that, I've seen such an increase in my happiness in this industry you know, the opportunities that have opened up for me because I have stopped being so scared of showing myself and what I have and my talent. Yeah, for sure. And at the end of the day, you are there to share what, whatever you're, I mean, for you, it's your voice and you're singing, right? For mm -hmm. other people, 
it's whatever your creative outlet is like that that's what you're here for to share it's not about you sharing other things that are getting in the way i mean we're a oh, very yeah. subjective industry and it mm -hmm. depends maybe you are a model and that is your physicality is a big part of what you do right and mm -hmm. the point is that you need to still own who you are and don't try to change who you what you've already been given there are more yeah. there's more that you bring to the table than just some physical appearance definitely did you know building industry relationships are the most important assets you need to create a long-lasting entertainment career? And don't take my word for it, guest after guest here on the podcast have attributed some of their biggest career moments to their relationships. That is why you need to get yourself inside the You Booked It community. You'll learn what you need to do to get noticed and make sure your headshot stays in the callback pile so you can book the gig more consistently and create a successful career. Tap the link in the show notes or go to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash invite to get inside free today. Beautiful. Well, let's move on to a time that I like to call your... <sighs> spotlight moment that one moment in time you realized yes i am going to be an entertainer for a living or maybe it was yes this is what i need to be doing as an entertainer tell us about that yeah because i've been doing this for a very long time there have been many of those throughout my youth throughout my life where i've just been like yeah this is what i'm meant to do i can't imagine you know every time i step on stage mm. every time i get Every time I'm singing, I'm, I realize, yes, this is what I'm meant to be doing. But one time in particular that really stands out to me when I realized, oh, yeah, this is definitely it for me, was actually when I went to the studio to record El Dorado. I'd been in a studio before, definitely, but I got in there and we were there for about eight to 10 hours. I think we got there at 8 a.m., didn't leave till 8 a.m., that 8 p.m. that night. And as we kept going and as I was just literally singing my brains out for the entire day, I realized that there was nothing else in that moment I would rather be doing. And yeah. there's nothing there's nothing else that would be as fulfilling for me than just sitting here and singing. I have known since six and seven that music was for me. And, you know, that moment right there, even though I've been in the studio before, even though that I've been here for a while, it was really then when I was like, okay, yes, this is what I'm good at. I'm, this is what I'm passionate about. And this is what I should be doing for the rest of my life. Yeah, such a good story. I think, I think it's fantastic when you have that moment. And like you said, you've had different mm -hmm. moments throughout your entire career so far, but that one in particular stands out. And mm -hmm. It's an amazing feeling, isn't it? When an entire day just disappears and you realize, oh my gosh, because you can almost, the only way to really appreciate it is to reflect on it because in the moment you're just so present, right? Oh, yeah. And then you go, whoa, now that was a day. That was amazing. Oh, exactly. That was an experience. Wow. What I love those feelings. And I love those moments because those have also happened multiple times for myself throughout mm -hmm. the career. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And Oh, what a wonderful time when you re when you have those little like, epiphanies throughout your day. <laughs> oh gosh, yes, and I'm such a em I'm an emotional person, whether I like to admit it or not. I am a crier, and I every time something like that happens to me, even if I don't cry, then I cry afterwards. I'm like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, if I'm crying by the end of the day, that's a good sign. Which usually it does not mean that for other people, but I am such a crier. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, built up emotion that I'm letting out. <laughs> exactly right. There you go. Let's piggyback on that question real quick. And let's talk about your number one booked it moment. Walk us through that day, what was going on in your life. And what about that moment makes it your favorite booked it moment? Okay. So when I first moved to Atlanta, I knew nobody. I didn't know anybody in the music industry. I was fresh out of literally the middle of nowhere, which is Valdosta, Georgia. And coming up here, I had to really reach out and make a name for myself in reaching out to people and seeing if they'd work with me. Hmm. And so for a couple of months, I had gotten into Jan Smith Studios. And if you don't know who Jan Smith is, incredible vocal coach. She's worked with Usher, Justin Bieber. She is an incredible woman. 
And so I worked with Heidi Higgins, who was at her studio, who has become a mentor and a therapist to me. But Heidi's the one that got me into songwriting. I'd never really gotten into songwriting until the last two years. And Thin White Line was the second song that I had ever written. And when I wrote that song, I think it was, I was at a point where I was like, am I, how am I going to record this? I don't know anybody, but I, I want to get started. This is what I want to do. And so I met with Jan and we had a, you know, hour long conversation about my goals and all of that. And then I think it was when we started making the plans to meet up in the studio and get started on my very first song. That's when I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm finally making it. I feel like I'm finally doing what I set out to do. And I felt like I had the world in my hands. It might not be a big moment to anybody else, but that's, it's the smaller moments that mean the most to me. I can get on stage, win an award, all of that, but I think it's the smaller moments that build you. And it made me realize, okay, I am an artist. People see that and I'm not just doing this on my own anymore. Yeah, you're not doing it on your own anymore. I love that. And to have a mentor like you found uh, mm -hmm. to help, you know, sit down, like you said, for an hour and think, all right, well, let's actually talk about it. Because it's one thing to say, hey, I wrote a song. Hey, it'd be mm -hmm. cool to record it. We see that all the time. Lots of people think oh, they yeah. want something, but mm -hmm. it's a completely different thing to make it a career and to really choose to do this as a profession right it's a completely mm -hmm. different mindset and you need to know that someone is this is what they want to do because it's full on you got to be very much committed to this path and it's amazing that you found someone like that and that you've developed such a wonderful relationship in this industry which i guess brings me to the point that relationships really they're the make and break of any career in mm -hmm. this industry you need to be connected with people that are professionals in whatever space that you're trying to break into or to be a part of, they're integral. Definitely, definitely. I think that the biggest thing that I would say to somebody who wants to do anything, wants to build a business, any of that, you need to be able to reach out to people who already have experience. Because when I learned how to do that, I then learned how to be on my own. And I learned that the worst somebody can say to you when you ask for help is no. And yeah. you're always going to get a no. There's always going to be some people that are like, no, I think that you're not ready, whatever. But you need to have people in your corner. You need to have people giving you advice because you don't, when you start out on something, anything, you don't know what you're doing. I had no clue what I was doing. All of the vocal training in the world cannot prepare me for recording in a studio or right. doing social media and all of that. The people that I have met in the last couple of years and the people that I have set out to meet and have reached out to have been the biggest asset and the biggest thing that has led to my success. Yeah, I love that you said the worst thing they can say is no. And I think we always forget this mm -hmm. because we let fear get in the way all the time and stop us. We go, ooh, and you, you get in your head and you go, what if this and what if that? What if this? Just make the phone call, write the email, make the connection, reach out because you never know what's going to happen. And from my experience, I found people tend to be much more generous and open than you would think they are. Definitely. There are so many people that I've reached out to in the past and I'm currently reaching out to that before I did it, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to take me seriously. And I decided, okay, whatever. If I'm not going to do it now, then I'm never going to do it. And who's going to do it for me? So I reach right. out to these people. And now I talk to most of them almost every day. And I've gotten the best advice of my life. And people are very open to helping new and upcoming artists. And new and upcoming anything. People love to give you information so that you don't make the mistakes that they did. Mm. And that's the biggest thing about it. And that's the biggest thing I've had to learn. And so now... I can sit here and if I find somebody, oh, I want to work with them, I can email them in five seconds and be like, okay, I would like to work with you. This is what I've got. Would you be open? When can you meet? When can you hop on a phone call with me? Thank you for your time. Yeah, 100%. I think it's also worth noting. So because a lot of, a lot of times people go, well, are, will people just do that for free? Will you just reach out and people go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can help you. I can do this. And 
and the thing is, a lot of the times you will get a lot from people for for nothing, right? Just mm -hmm. because they want to be helpful and generous. But I think the other side of that coin is that you also have to realize that if you're going to be professional in this industry, that if you need some help or guidance or mentorship in any part of what you're trying to do, there will come a point when you are going to have to compensate people for their expertise, whether that's vocal lessons or acting lessons or uh, coaching of some sort, right? There is a value in what other people have experienced and mm -hmm. what they can provide you and bring to the table. And that does carry value, real value. And like I said, there's a lot of stuff that you can get for nothing except for your time and your commitment. But also know that there will be a time when, look, here's me, the artist. I am also a business. I need to invest in this business and these resources have what I need. Exactly. And that's such a good point because these people who are in the industry, and I think a lot of people who enter in the industry go in, I know that to be completely honest with you, I did too, go in with this mindset, oh, someone's going to find me, someone's going to help me in mm. any way that they can. And while a lot of people will help you, it's to a point. Exactly. There is information that these people know in the industry, people above you, they have done what you're doing now. They've been through it. They've been through more than that. So that information that has led to their success, it comes at a price. These people who are so good at what they do there's a reason and there's a secret and they know it and why would they just give it out to everybody it's it's not open information that's why whenever you know i see online people like especially on twitter twitter is the biggest place i love twitter but people will go on there and just ask for unsolicited advice and people you it's not like it doesn't work like that no business works like that these people who you're getting advice from also have businesses as well that they're trying to keep up so unless you can add something to them beyond the very first conversation, then you really, you're not going to get much. You're not going to get much more. Yep. Well said. And it's, and different people offer varying degrees of what you can get from them, depending on what their, you know, perceived status may be in whatever industry it is. And mm -hmm. I think we all know that, but I think you need to look at it and go, you know, put on your business hat. It's something that a lot of, you know, us entertainers don't necessarily want to do, but mm -hmm. you have to do it. It's, an, it's a requirement if you're going to make this your career and your business. And you have to go, okay, yep, that makes sense. There's nothing strange about that. And to look at things and take the different potential opportunities out there for you and weigh them up, put pros and cons. Is it worth me investing in this person or these lessons or whatever, whatever it might be that you're trying to do and make it a business decision as well. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, also to go in hand in hand with that, a lot of times when you're making those decisions, you really have to look deep and trust your gut and be mm. like, is this worth it for me to invest in? Because yes. while someone can come with you with a great offer, I can tell you when I first started, I when I first started my first song, I had so many people reach out to me wanting to do artist development, help me in this way, in this way, in this way, but for a price. And that was not a price that I was ready to pay yet. I yeah. was not there yet. So you have to really realize while you're reaching out to these people and while you are trying to learn as much as you can, don't overshoot yourself. Don't go beyond what you are at. Meet people where you are. And, you know, some people may give you the best offer in the world, but it is not meant for you at that time. That's one it, of the biggest things. Exactly right. Exactly right. I think that's very, very well said. Very well said. Let's move on and take a moment to talk about the present. What projects are you working on now? What are you looking forward to? And, you know, we're kind of coming out of the tail end of this pandemic, or at least it looks like it. How do you see the entertainment industry moving forward in the next couple of years? Yeah. So right now, I'm really just focused on writing. I'm focused on writing music that I like and recording things that make me happy. I am actually working on, like I said in the beginning, I'm working on an EP. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of singles out and I think that's the next best thing for me. I'm really excited to showcase what I'm doing there and get a little bit more of, give people a bigger taste of what I can do. 
and what I can write and hopefully reach more people. In terms of how I see the inter- inter- entertainment industry moving forward in the next couple of years, I really hope, at least for me, to have reached people, no matter how big or small, you know, numbers, they matter to people, but they really don't matter much to me. As long as I'm singing and reaching somebody, that's the mm. biggest thing for me. Because the first and foremost, the thing I'm here to do is sing and write and be an artist. So really, I hope that with COVID going away, that there is becoming a lot more opportunity to go out and perform. And that's really the only thing that I want to do. I want to be able to travel beyond Georgia, beyond Nashville, beyond the East Coast of the United States and reach people, meet as many people as I can and just touch people with my music. Very cool. Love that. Have you ever considered or looked into finding like virtual stages? And I'm saying I'm talking like virtual stages in like in games, like a Minecraft or a Roblox. Have you ever thought about that? Or if that even is a possibility for something that like what you do? I actually, that's a very new concept that I feel like the the pandemic and being in quarantine has really just, it's increased mm. interest for stuff like that. Um, and I think stuff like that is super cool. I know Ariana Grande, who's one of my absolute all-time favorite artists, she just did a virtual concert with Fortnite, which yeah. I... Honestly, bef- to be completely truthful, before she did it, I really had heard about it, but it really was not something that was at the forefront of my mind. I think that stuff like that is it, really cool. I think that it's crazy that we've been able to make it to that point in the industry. And I yeah. think that I do think there are going to be options opening up definitely for more virtual concerts because people like being in the comfort of their own homes Mm -hmm. and i would honestly be so open to doing that i've never really given the opportunity but i think that's really cool but i also while saying that i think that it's very cool and i think that it opens up your audience to people who are big gamers and are in that space i do think that if that's something that is pushed we lose what do you lose? I mean, you lose the live in-person shows that mean so much to people. And I think that I would prefer, because I know that the shows that I've gone to in my life have truly impacted me. And like we talked about earlier, I've had many of, yes, this is what I'm meant to do moments. And a lot of those have been watching other artists on stage. Hmm. I think that I would like to put my focus on that before I think about going virtual. While that might be, I don't know how that would go because everything is moving virtual, but I think that there's still a lot of beauty in a live concert and a, what you can do live. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I think the, it's, you can't really ever replace in person and you can't really replace, can't replace the live, right? Because you can, mm. that oh, energy, yeah. it's hard to transfer that energy virtually. I only asked oh, because yeah. just a, a few weeks ago, I was... Uh, a sponsor, or you booked it was, I should say, a sponsor mm-hmm. of a a production of The Lion King that was done in Minecraft, that was done live. And I came across that project. I was like, wow, this thing is like just very cutting edge, super niche. And I thought it was just so cool. I'm like, I just need to be involved with this thing and see what the heck is going on here. And I, it was amazing. It was really cool. But that just since then, that's gotten my mind churning with different possibilities. So I was just mm-hmm. interested to ask and see if that was even like in the realm of thought. No, yeah. Stuff like that is so innovative. I wish I could be, I'm creative, but not that creative. <laughs> I think that stuff like that is really interesting. And I would definitely in the future, I would love to be a part of something like that because it is super niche. Like it, it caters to a certain group of people that is normally really hard to reach because a lot of those people, that's what they do with their lives. So I, I would be so interested in doing that in the future. And I do think that's going to become a thing that is a lot more common. You're going to mm. see that way more, especially because everything is online now. Yeah. And maybe in the future, that would be a possibility for me. But I really haven't thought about it until you just really talked about it until yeah. I saw it the other day, too, with Ariana. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Anyway, crazy world we're living in. Uh, oh, yeah. It is time to move on to one of my favorite sections in the interview. I call it the Grease Light and Round. <laughs> I am going to ask you a handful of questions. I want you to answer them as quickly and concisely as possible, one after another. Are you ready? Yes. 
All right, first question. What was the one thing holding you back from committing to a career as an entertainer? Myself entirely. How I viewed my, myself and my perfectionism have all prevented me from being 100% myself, myself in the past, and mm. I'm working on that every day. Second question. What is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Be the hardest working person in the room because then people can't deny you and your talent. There you go. Third question. What is something that is working for you right now? Or if you'd like to go pre-COVID, what was working for you before our industry went on pause? Definitely setting out times in my day to sit down and just sing and write and be musical and be creative because I'm so busy all the time and having that 30 minutes to an hour mm. <laughs> keeps me literally sane. Yeah, for sure. That reminds me have of a book. Have you read the book, The War of Art? No, I haven't, but I've definitely heard that title before. Yeah. So there's the, the Art of War, which is like been around for ages, but there's The mm -hmm. War of Art which uh, was written by a guy, I can't remember, the, his name is eluding me at the moment, but it's a fairly short book. And he's talking about being an artist. He's a writer, uh, an author. Mm -hmm. And basically, he's, every day when we show up to do our art, whatever that is, first off, you need to show up every day and do your thing, regardless if you feel good, you feel inspired. He said, your creativity comes because you have done, you're, you're consistently almost trying to force yourself to be creative in a way. Mm -hmm. And by being consistent, that's when creativity just continues to, like, it's like a muscle creativity. So I don't know, it's a really interesting book. So I would recommend picking it up or get the audio book. It's really quite short, but it's really cool. And it's, I think oh, it's yeah. perfect for pretty much every single artist out there. It's a must read. I definitely just wrote that down. So I will definitely be giving that a read. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of books, fourth question, what is your best resource? Maybe it is a book or a movie, maybe a YouTube video, podcast, piece of technology that you found is helping your career right now. So actually, it's not a book. It's not a movie. It's something that is on everybody's phones, voice notes on the iPhone. I record every single thing that I do. I'm singing 24-7 and ideas come and go. And so mm -hmm. it, ha it allows me to go ahead, record that idea on hand and never lose them. For sure. You should try out the app called Otter. Have you heard of this? No. So it, they've got a paid version like, like everybody, but the free version, you get 600 minutes a mm -hmm. month and it is a voice memo app, mm -hmm. but it does live transcription of your voice memo. Oh, I and love it. And it's these very things. quite accurate. So give it a go. Thank you for all of these recommendations. Keep them coming. I need every single one. That's it. Yeah, I use, that's the thing. Too. I do a lot of note taking and journaling and things like this. And I've got ideas, you just like a lot of us creative types. And mm -hmm. I found that to be really helpful because even more so than a voice memo, because I like that it accompanies it, but I'm like, ooh, I can just read what I just wrote. And that's awesome. Oh, yeah. That's and I can so export smart. it to wherever I need to go. So pretty cool. And the fifth question. If you had to start your career from scratch, but you still had all the knowledge and experience you've collected from your career in this industry, what would you do or not do? Would you do anything differently or would you keep it the same? I, good question. I would probably, the biggest thing I could say to myself, reach out to people sooner. Mm. Don't wait and hope that someone will find me, but put in the extra work that's needed. You know, I've always been good at reaching out to people, but in the beginning, I obviously, as we talked about, I was terrified of rejection. So I was struggling to reach out. Now I can talk to anyone and have made some of the best relationships by doing that. But I would tell myself, just go ahead and send the email. Beautiful. And the last question, what is the golden nugget knowledge drop you've learned from your successful career in the industry you'd like to leave with our listeners? So... One piece of advice that somebody gave me one time, and at first I rolled my eyes, I was like, no, absolutely not. Now I live by it. Not everything has to be perfect. People do not like perfection. They like real raw mess ups, the voice cracks, everything. You are human. Don't be hard on yourself. And if you liked it enough to post it or do it or whatever, it is good enough. Yes, it is good enough. I think... That's such a great golden nugget to end with, because if you try to be perfect, you'll never do anything. Mm, no. Oh, my right? goodness. I, I, I can't tell you the amount of things that I have not in my past that I have not posted, have not done because I was like, oh, 
my voice sounded a little weird there. I'm not going to do that.、Mm. It stopped me from doing a lot of things. So learning that has been very helpful. Yeah, and when you post or when you share and when you put, the more you put things out there, which inevitably are imperfect, a really cool thing happens is that you become it. Like it keeps expanding this. This comfort zone of what you can take on and what you can do for yourself,、mm. and that's how we grow. We, it's a bit scary to post that non-perfect, <laughs> that imperfect thing, right? But、yes. as you do that, go, you go, all right, I did that,、exactly. and nothing really happened, except now it's there, and I did it, and、now、then you feel、there. good, and then you and just keep as, doing it. Yeah, and it's not as scary as you thought it was to be real in front of. The masses. It's not that scary. Exactly, and then you're then that comfort zone keeps getting bigger, and you move into bigger and bigger things. But you can't progress if you don't take those uncomfortable steps. Exactly. Yes, and it is now that time to wrap up this interview. ML, it's time to give yourself a plug. So, where can we find you? How do our listeners connect with you? And is there anything you want to promote? So. People can connect with me. The place where I'm most active is my Instagram. It's going to be at ML Mosley Music. I also have a Twitter at ML Mosley with two Y's at the end, and then my YouTube and my Facebook are ML Mosley. That's the best place to reach out to me. You can also find me on all streaming platforms: Spotify, Apple Music, under ML Mosley, and. Something that I would want to promote would be my new single El Dorado. It's out on all major platforms. It was a lot of work in progress, and I would want anybody to listen to it. Beautiful. And for everyone listening out there, I have put the links to everything ML just said, so you can easily connect with her and all of her projects. It's in the description of this episode. And also, be sure to share this podcast with your fellow entertainers, coaches, teachers, arts and entertainment educators, and anyone you know aspiring to create a career in the entertainment industry. You booked it is the number one resource of expertise on how to actually create a successful entertainment career. Case in point. Everything ML gave us today in this episode. If you like this episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. ML, thank you so much for jumping on and having a chat with me. I'm really glad we got connected. I had a great time. I did too. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really honored that I booked it, and I can't thank you enough. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you so much for listening today. If you enjoyed this episode and want more like it, be sure to smash that subscribe button. Also, be sure to join the You Booked It community. Inside, you can connect with your people, build industry relationships, unlock unlimited masterclasses, and access the tools and training you need to create sustainable career momentum. Get your invite link right now. Tap the link in the show notes, or head over to youbookedpodcast.com/invite, and we'll see you there.